This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Chelsea. Chelsea is a champion surfer, so she's accustomed to moving super fast, which is why she relies on super fast broadband brought to her through Flow's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her family sharing and surfing and saving each month. Combined, she bundles her Flow mobile, home phone, and TV services so she can enjoy much more for much less, and so can you. Visit any Flow retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994, or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. This is the Barbados Today afternoon news update for Friday, March 11. Thank you for joining us. I am Marie Claire Williams. The University of the West Indies Cave Hill campus today announced plans to boost the campus's financial viability. Addressing the annual business meeting of the campus council this morning, Principal Professor Eudine Barito announced several new initiatives for the next year. We place great emphasis, great emphasis on an expanding the international reach of the campus as a key strategy in enhancing financial viability, aligning campus plans with the human resource strategy of the Barbados government in promoting higher education as an export sector, increasing the number of the students at Cable Campus, and expanding regional and international research and collaboration. More critically, Chair, the Cable Campus, we achieve those synergies with the Vice Chancellor's vision to globalize higher education at the UWI. So what we are doing at Cable is totally in sync with the larger vision of the Vice Chancellor. We intend to strengthen the campus finances, finances sorry, and programmatic structure by the vigorous pursuit of an international agenda. So we are using internationalization, the plan to bolster financial viability, and chair the Cable Campus continues to build on his expertise in offering English as a second language. The campus is expanding its educational goods and services in a suite of language services that include the formal establishment of a translation bureau and expand and an expanded English as a second language immersion program. The jobs of 26 employees of Scotia Bank are on the line as the company moves to restructure its support functions. The bank says a few others in the Eastern Caribbean will also be affected by the restructuring exercise. A statement from the financial institution said over the next few months, they will also be looking for opportunities to place the affected employees where possible. The Barbados Water Authority has announced new measures to relax the controversial ban on the use of potable water by residents and businesses. The measures were introduced as a result of the ongoing drought and run from March 1st to May 31st. But yesterday, the BWA rolled out fresh guidelines nine days after the prohibition came into effect. The BWA is now singling out agriculture, fisheries, restaurants, funeral homes, as well as owners of swimming pools and spas and commercial vehicle wash outlets for some flexibility in use. The use of drip irrigation for agricultural crops is now being permitted. Preliminary research has indicated that the Zika virus has not affected the level of interest in the region from potential visitors. But economics professor at the UWI Cave Hill campus, Winston Moore, tells Barbados today that the actual arrivals numbers will not be known until June. We're only going to have an idea of that impact on tourist arrivals numbers two or three months from now when the travel data comes in. Now, if it, um, the Zika virus does have a negative impact on travel, this then means that there are going to be implications for tax revenue to the region, um, foreign exchange earnings, and, you know, there's some very broad spillover effects of tourism on the entire uh, economic activity. In sports, Kieran Powell returns to the WICB Professional Cricket League Regional 4-Day Tournament, which enters its penultimate round this weekend. Powell's return has overshadowed the race for the Headley Weeks Trophy, which is now down to a battle between the reigning champions, Guyana Jaguars and Barbados Pride. Powell is in the lineup for the match between the bottom of the table Leeward Islands Hurricanes and the Jaguars at the Viv Richards Cricket Grounds in Antigua. In the other matches, Pride face arch rivals Trinidad and Tobago Red Force at the National Cricket Center in Trinidad, while the Windward Islands Volcanoes and Jamaica Scorpions clash at the Arnosville Sports Complex in St. Vincent. There's regional and international news after this short break. 
Hey, I'm Rabia. Look out for my new segment, Fashion and Beauty with Rabia, coming out this week. It's going to be so exciting. It's going to cover hair, nails, shoes, everything fashion and beauty. I'm excited, and you should be too. These papers ain't selling at all at all. Get your paper, get your paper. Only 225. Get your paper. Get your paper, miss. No, take it, take it. I'm gonna pay for it. Barbados today, all the way. <laughs> Barbados today. News you can trust. In news from the region, Trinidad's housing minister is facing two investigations by the Integrity Commission. The probe is related to Minister Marlene McDonald's past actions in a previous administration of the People's National Movement. We get more in this report from TV6 News. On this occasion, the AG focused less on the allegations concerning a banking transaction made by planning minister Camille robinson Regis and more on the allegations against the housing minister. It isn't that Minister McDonald gave any home to anyone herself. It isn't that Minister McDonald's advisor made a recommendation. None of these factors are true. And based upon that position, the Prime Minister made the utterances that he did. Minister McDonald's attorney wrote the Integrity Commission seeking the status of the complaint that has been lodged against her with respect to the allocation of a house to a person she said she had a personal relationship with, Michael Carew, while she was the Community Development Minister in 2008. Fixing TNT's Kirkwith alleged that while she served as Community Development Minister in 2010, Ms. McDonald approved the funding to the Calabar Foundation on which Mr. Carew serves as a director. You, you are aware that the Integrity Commission, you said they, this matter was closed on the Calabar Foundation in 2013. The matter has been reopened. Yes. You're I'm aware of that? Yes, I'm aware. And you're aware that there are documents showing that a grant was given before the organization was officially registered. Yes. A check was made to a foundation which at the time may not have existed yes. legally. I, I'll just tell you, for example, it's a matter of law in the Companies Act mm -hmm. that you can actually be an entity prior to the receipt of a certificate of incorporation. On the international scene, Japan today stood still for a moment to remember the victims of the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. It is five years since the 9.0 earthquake struck offshore, bringing with it the deadly tsunami that killed over 18,000 people in the country's northeast coast. Prime Minister and Emperor joined a nationwide moment of silence at the memorial at the exact moment the quake hit. And former U.S. Republican presidential candidate Ben Carson has endorsed the frontrunner Donald Trump. The retired neurosurgeon says he wants the voice of the people to be heard. Carson told a press conference this morning that he and Trump had reconciled after several spats during their respective campaigns. He also called on the Republican Party to support the leading candidate and let the political process play out. That's the news. Remember, there's more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also tune in to Channel 99 on Flow TV or Mix 96.9 FM for more news and sports. I am Marikla Williams. Good afternoon.